Good morning. Good morning. Oh, we can do better than that. Good morning. That's better. That's better. God's been good to us. He woke us up this morning when he really didn't have to. Um, there are a lot of people that laid down last night, sadly, that weren't blessed like you and I were blessed to wake up this morning. But God saw fit, as my grandmother used to say, to touch us with his finger of love. And you, you thought the alarm clock did it. No, let me just tell you, God did it. Um, he blessed us to wake up this morning with the sole intent and purpose in mind to come here and serve him in spirit and in truth. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad that you're here. More importantly, uh, I'm glad for those who are, are visiting with us, those who are enjoying the benefit of our live stream, as well as those who took the short drive uh, from Abilene to be with us personally. Um, I'm glad to see you. The Day family is here um, with us this morning. Um, Bonnie and uh, Emily, very special people to me. The Fambles and the Days go, go, go way back um, to my time when I was a deacon and then served together uh, as elders. Um, Bonnie, Emily, I still, there's not a day that goes by that I don't honor my brother Doug. And so um, we just want you to have that gift from us, a small token uh, of our appreciation for you visiting um, with us this morning. And we're glad, we're glad to have you with us as well. Make a couple of announcements and I'll get right into the lesson. Remember next week, being the last Sunday of the month, um, we're gonna have a, a special prayer service or prayer during the time of our service um, where we're gonna pray for the situation um, in Ukraine. Even though there are some atrocities that are happening, God is still sovereign and God is still in control, guys. And so what we're going to do, and I've invited several people from the community to come and to pray with us, whether they take us up on that invitation, that's up to them, but we're going to pray um, for the situation in re Ukraine. Several of the men uh, are gonna lead uh, a special prayer. And at that time, we're going to take a second contribution. We'll take our first offering, our regular contribution. The men are gonna come back and we're gonna take a love offering. We're gonna take a free will offering and all of those funds that we collect on next week, we will send to EEM, Eastern European Mission. And you remember, I've been telling you now that that organization in the past, EEM um, and their word, not mine, they were responsible for smuggling Bibles into the Ukraine area. But now with all the, the turmoil that's happening, um, they've converted a big portion of their operation into relief efforts. And so that money, they already have the infrastructure, they already have boots on the ground. And so we're gonna take that free will offering and we're gonna send it to EEM and then they're going to use that to help the situation in Ukraine. So anyone who wants to give, please come next week ready to give. By next week, those of you who are following us online, our online giving should be in place. I expect to hear from the company on Tuesday. Um, so you should, by next week, be able to give uh, an offering online towards the Ukraine effort, as well as those regular followers who've been asking me online to be able to be regular supporters of this work, you'll be able to do that next week. So if, in fact, online audience, that does not happen, I will email you and, uh, and give you an alternate um, way that you can give. But I expect our online giving to be up and running via our website, trentcoc.org, on next week. So come ready next week, please, Trent, to um, support that love offering. Horrible, horrible situation um, in Ukraine. But even, even a little bit of help, whatever we can do as a relief effort, then we are glad to do that to send to help that situation. So next Sunday, um, we'll, we'll have our, pr our prayer during our uh, worship and we'll have a special offering that we'll take for the uh, situation in Ukraine. I want to give a, a special thank you for uh, those who served we on Friday. I just want to give a, a personal thank you to uh, those who came out and support uh, the family of Tina Martin who passed and we had our service at the uh, Starbucks funeral home in, um, in Merkel. 
uh, Richard just did an outstanding job. I mean, that Richard was tailor-made, I think, to, to really do those. So Richard, outstanding job, as well as those who came out to support and to sing and to just encourage that family. You'll remember it wasn't three months ago, maybe four, I don't have the exact time frame, but her husband passed. And so that was just, you know, when Richard called me, I really thought he was joking. You know, Richard's a jokester. Now he's a, he's a jokester. I said, wait, what, really? We, we doing what? And we just, she was just buried her husband uh, three, I want to say three months, almost four months ago. And so um, the fact that you showed up and you supported that family and you, we sang and we just encouraged them. Folks, you don't know how much help somebody needs and how much you're going to need in your hour. And so we were able to just encourage that family. And I've, I've said this before, Trent, and I'll get into the lesson. It's not going to be long, I promise. Um, but, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think that's been one of our problems, not, not here in Trent. No, 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 not, not here in Trent. But in Churches of Christ in general, and I'm, I'm going to get in trouble, especially my online audience, when I say this, but I stand by it, and I can stand by it biblically. I think we have been uh, for too long trying to preach the doctrine to people, but not showing love. And that's been our problem. That's why our numbers are declining so I stand ready to uh, to, to take the shellacking I stand ready to take the the, the, the the lashes when you come just bring your Bible that's all I that's all I ask when you come you want to talk to brother Fanbo just bring your Bible and we can certainly talk about that but thanks to those who are serving we stand ready as the Trent Church of Christ to help out and to serve any way that we can in our community how do you how do you reconcile that with the Bible it's easy Jesus says, by this, all people will know, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Faith in Action is our series for this particular uh, third week uh, of the month uh, of March. And what we're trying to do and trying to make the word flesh is to say faith is not a one-time occurrence. If you have true faith, then true faith banks on eternity. And it goes far beyond just this, this head knowledge or this mouth nodding about, yes, I believe it. faith goes further than that. And so today, as we look at Hebrews chapter 11, which is where all the, the lessons have been, let's look at how to rise above worldly pleasures. We're looking at the life of Moses, especially through the eyes, through the prism, of Hebrews chapter 11, and the man Moses has come up as an example of faith and how we should make application to our lives. Before I go into that, let me just go off script for a moment and put in a plug for our Bible classes. If you aren't coming to our Bible classes, boy, you are missing a treat. You are missing a treat. We started a section, a series now, that I'm calling Timeless. We're looking at the Old Testament characters and we're, we're seeing what the word meant to them at that particular time, but we're also pulling out applications and observations for us at this particular day and time. Now would be a great time to recommit. If you are not coming to Bible class, allow me to issue you the invitation to come to Bible class so that we can get and grow deeper and deeper in the word. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, verse 6, and then verse 24 to, to 26, the Bible reads like this. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ um, as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt 
because he was looking ahead to his reward. Did you see the three building blocks in this text that really help us to better understand how we can use our faith to connect to what's eternal? Let me help you. When Moses grew up and learned the truth about his heritage and where he came to and where he came from, the book says, number one, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 25 also says, not only did he refuse, he made a direct choice. He chose to be mistreated along with his people rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of Pharaoh's house. And then, verse 26, where we'll end. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt. Why? Because he was looking ahead to his reward. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the example that you've left us in, in your word, in the man Moses. Help us, Lord, to, to do the same thing with our faith, not to have just a, a casual belief, but a firm, rooted commitment that might cost us something. Help us to make the same choices, to say no to the fleeting pleasures of the world and to say yes to your eternal presence and your eternal glory. Help now, Lord, your word find a resting place on honest hearts that people, men and women, whether in person or online, would ask the eternal question, what, what must I do to be saved? Help us to be example of the believers in everything that we do and everything that we say. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. The son of Pharaoh's daughter, he, he had certain privileges. As, as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, Moses ran in probably the best circles in Egypt. Anybody who was anybody knew everybody who knew who Moses was. People knew Moses as a man of influence, a man of stature. If you look at it, you would say, like I would say, boy, Moses sure had it made. Yet something happened in, in his life to where he put all that aside to where now he chose to suffer with his people rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasure of life for the moment. He chose to give up that status and all that influence to live among those wretched slave laborers and that's what they were they weren't even people looking back then they just they looked at them as as chattel as property just as a means to the end and why in the world would you come from pharaoh's palace to now identify with slaves can you imagine the gossip around, among the blue collar society or the, the the high society then did you hear what happened no child what happened moses is now uh, identifying with the slave. Moses, you talking about the same, <laughs> the, the Pharaoh's daughter Moses? Yeah. What, what done got into it? I don't know. <laughs> he chose to give all that up and to go with the people of God. Imagine the tongues that were wagging at that time. But let me, let me just say it. Let me say it like this. Faith takes God at his word and then confidently acts on it. If in fact you are really living your life and stepping out by faith, although it might look like you got it made on one side, when you realize what that is compared to that which is eternal, you will give up living in the palace to go among the people of God if that's where God calls you to go. Faith takes God at his word, and then confidently acts upon it. Think about it like this. Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6, the Bible says faith is taking God at his word. I, I, I really believe this. I really believe this. There are some of us that don't take God at his word. We don't. 
We can tell by the way we live. We can tell by the way the, the things that we say. Oh, we do. But when the rubber meets the ground, are we really, really, really willing to take God at his word? Paul said in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, being confident of this one thing, that he who began a good work in you will carry it to his completion the day of Jesus Christ. When it comes to our relationship with God and our faith in God, we can't count on what's here and, and what we have and the things we have and our house and our job and all. Th that's temporary. That's not it. We are banking towards treasures in heaven. And, and everything that God has done for us is pointing us, not from here on this earth, but pointing us towards heaven. First John chapter 5. John said it like this, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you might know you have eternal life. For this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Do you not know that that, that, that text really foundationalizes on our faith that we put in him? If we know he hears us, verse 15 says, Whatever we ask, we know that we have it when we ask it of him. The problem is when we go to God and we ask for things, we normally make God our last resort rather than taking it to him in the first place. But Moses chose a course that he knew would bring him the world's reproach. I'm reminded of the, the rich young ruler in, in, in scripture, in the parables, you remember? And he said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And, and Jesus told him, go sell everything you have, give it to the poor, then come follow me and you'll have treasures in heaven. You remember what happened at the end of that parable? Remember what the Bible says? He went away what? Remember? Sorrowful, grieved, the Bible says, because he had great possessions. In other words, his possessions possessed him rather than him possessing his possessions. Wonder what would have happened. I've told you this before. Wonder what would have happened. He'd say, okay. Jesus said, I got to sell everything. Wonder what happened. He would have went home and put up a garage sale. Everything, like, like, like Charlie Brown and Lucy, everything five cents. <laughs> everything. And can, give everything, sell everything dirt cheap and give it away. Wonder if Jesus would have came to the garage sale and say, hey, uh, take the signs down. You can keep it. I just wanted to know if you do it. You can keep it. It's okay. I just wanted to know if you. There are times when God is confronting us, and there are some things that we need to do. All we need to do is step out by faith. And God could be saying, I just want to see where I rank in your life. You remember the, the, the guy who built the barns, who was blessed with bumper crop? You remember what his plan was? I'm going to build bigger barns and, and store up for myself and, and, and say, take it easy, soul, eat, drink, and be merry. And you remember what happened at the end of that parable? God came back and said, uh, no, Bubba, this night your soul is required of you. So when we put our things in front of our faith, then Houston, we have a problem. But Moses didn't do that. Moses chose a course chose a course that he knew would bring him the world's reproach. Why would a man knowingly choose such suffering? And as they were talking back in the day, tongues had to wag. He has lost his mind. He is insane. No, I would argue he's not insane. Moses understood some things that we have yet to understand. That is, if we give something up for God and take a leap of faith, God will not only give that back to us, but through the annals of time, God will give us and make our life a faith example. Again, Mark chapter 13, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who went looking for some pearls. And when he found one, he found it to be of great value. And he, he went away and because he couldn't afford it right then, he sold everything he had. And then he bought this one great pearl, this one great thing of value. Why did he do that? He recognized the thing of value that he had at that one time. And that one instance was far greater than the rest of his possessions. So what's the takeaway? 
from this? How do we, how do we then reconcile that faith banks on eternity, especially looking at the life of Moses? And I'll finish, I'll finish a lot of this tonight, but let me just give you two nuggets before I go. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 10. Number one, Moses knew by taking the side with the, with, with the slaves and with his people, not only was it the right thing to do, it's what God wanted him to do. First Timothy 4.10, the Bible says that's why we labor and we strive because we put our hope in the living God, our Savior of all people, and especially those who believe. Nugget number one, you know, there are times when we need to let our faith bank for us and put our hope in the living God. Some of us, I'm concerned. I, I, don't think, I don't think your hope and your trust is in the living God. Our hope and our trust is in us. We rely on ourselves. We rely on me, myself, and I. And we tell ourselves that we exercise and have faith. But my question is, do we? We need to learn from the lesson that we need to put our faith and our hope and our trust in the living God. First Peter chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter 4. <clears throat> and verse 14, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, Peter says, you are blessed. Listen to that. And it almost has kind of a, um, a, a, a dichotic ring to it. He's saying if you lose something, you're going to gain it back. Listen to what he's saying. If you're insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. Why? For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Nugget number two. We need to work on our faith banking for what's in eternity because a lot of times our spirit and the things that we do is all about us and God doesn't factor into the picture until our whole card of life is turned face down. Peter says the spirit of glory and the spirit of God needs to rest on you. When's the last time that you were challenging your faith and you, you really had no choice but to depend on God and tell the truth. When you came through that storm and you came through that instance, you came through that bad situation, was your faith stronger on the back than it was on the front? If, if that's true, if that comes back, yes, then God used that circumstance to strengthen your faith. And that's all we need to do in our life. We need to allow God to use whatever we, whatever we go through, to use our circumstances to make our faith stronger as an example for other people and ultimately make our faith stronger in our relationship with him. Join me tonight online, tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 14. We're going to look at the crossing of the Red Sea and, and see how God was delivering some breadcrumbs all up until the time, right at the time, the children of Israel were faced with the Red Sea and they got to crying and whining and whining and crying when all along God had already been showing them, I've taken care of you from this to this to this and you're not going to trust me now? Join me tonight and let's look at the faith that it takes to move past obstacles in our lives. You know, there are certain times in our lives where, in spite of our best effort, we run against and we run up against circumstances to where we just need God. The invitation time in our service is a time that we come forward and we, we step out by faith and we say, wait a minute, this thing I'm dealing with, I need prayer. I can't handle it on my own. It's too big for me. In just a minute, we're going to stand and we're going to sing an invitation song. If you have a prayer need, something that you need us to pray for you on, in just a minute, come forward as soon as they start singing and come down and just let us know what we're praying for. Do we need all the sort of details? No, we don't. We just need to know what's going on enough that we can say we are praying for you. And what happens after that is, after we pray for you, God then restores you to his fellowship. And I've said this before, and I'm continually working on this, and, and, and we are continually working on this. When did it become okay to come to church and not ask for prayer and not repent? When, when did that become okay? 
And, and I want us to really continue to think about, oh, I know, I know. For the fact I got God in my heart, and I'm just good. Really? <laughs> After you done whooped somebody's head and everybody in the community saw it. No, there are things that we need to really rethink as we call our relationship with God and coming forward and asking for prayer. Or perhaps you haven't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Perhaps you, you've heard some things and you've been coming and you heard some things and you said, Brother Fremble, I, I got some Bible questions that I offer myself to you to answer those questions. We avail ourselves that we answer those questions. No, we're not perfect, but God is. And his word is perfect. And I said it, I've been saying it since I came to Trent. Don't, don't look at us and try to be like us. Let's all get together and try to be more like him. If you haven't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, you come by hearing his word, believing it, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ, being willing to be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. Based on that act of obedience, God will add you to his congregational family, where together then we'll learn, we'll cry, we'll laugh, we'll grow, and ultimately, the goal is, I want to see you in heaven. I want to fellowship with you in heaven. So, if you have a need this morning, asking for prayer, asking a Bible question, or wanting to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, we invite you to come forward now as we stand and sing the song of invitation. <laughs>